Welcome to another edition of Trey's Timeless 15 Minutes of East Play. Today's Sunday service, according to the seven-day week, in our traditional weekly week weakening cycle, till we get to the strengthening cycle. Old Six Eyes is coming here to talk to you about a very key subject in our awakening process. The importance of the important history. Is Yahweh the original predator narcissist? Is Yahweh the source through archons and the demiurge of a narcissistic, predatorial, spiritual takeover of mankind? It's, um for some reason I wrote Shiva is the inert creator and Shakti is the energy, the divine feminine. For some reason that was related. I wrote that on this page. Um, the original, according to the original teachings of um, Shiva. So with the Abrahamic religions, I know why, because it was a divine feminine force that was the energy source. Openly, they openly admitted this. This video has been brought to you uh, by both Humboldt and Santa Cruz companies who specialize in organic cannabis products. And... So since there's no girl standing or sitting or no woman sitting next to me here, I'm just letting you know I invoke the divine feminine within. And again, in my earlier life, this um, since I came out here to live out my musical dreams, this attracted all sorts of, in my healing dreams, this attracted all sorts of moths and... Um, divine beings and imposters to the flame, and I've talked about that in the past. So, um, when you go back to the, the conquistadores, the history of California, again, as I said, the, the rent, um, with the Mexican people who were raised, and all the over 70-odd percent of the state who were raised Catholic, the, the subconscious energy of the Black Suns, the Draco influence, is is just you know unless they learn to clear it and it's going to take a lot of deep work probably you know it's the predatorial spirit whether they're into the sexual styles they learn from these beings or just simply the aggressive um, slavery mind state if i gotta run or i'm or worried about you know what the archons think and um remember this folks the real creator would never be jealous why would he or she or it, why would it be jealous? This idea is your greatest. This is the number one clear shining example of how Yahweh is the imposter who brought forth, maybe the one who brought forth this tendency to self-aggrandize and think that um, all the sources of energy have to come from me, but I have to steal it from you, kind of thing, you know. Um, and how? Through the guilt, through the repression, through the um, denigration of the divine feminine to a lower position. I, I really, I'm really thankful for one of my greatest sources of information, as I say, the channelings of, of Lisa Renee, WordPress, circles, Circle of the Dolphins, WordPress, and um, 
She talks a lot about the return of the divine feminine Christ. Well, I feel it shining on my face right now. And the only way that I've been able to feel it is that through my meditations, I've been able to let go of the narcissist force that would, the imposter force that I learned from Yahweh, the I am that only burns in control, the Saturn hexagram that only burns the fire of the B666 system that makes us six six sickly fight against each other. In 2020, it, they've actually put it on the ground. Six, six, six. And they lock up the world and I look on the ground and it says six, six, six. I think, hmm, who's behind this? And my birthday, December 15th, is the number six. But that's a single six, right? Six, six, six is nine in numerology, okay? What's nine, the Virgo, my zodiac sign, or Sagittarius, or anyway, so I was trailing off a tad there. So um, this is why I tell people to reject all the negative dogmas, because it's the imposter, okay? All of it. This is how they did it. And it's really obvious once you're born again, or you've had enough truly born again to the Gnostic type of spirit of Christ, or you've actually had enough awakening or uh, kundalini or you're an enlightened master kind of experiences you got to align with the indigenous roots like native american teachings the Tao, the the ancient buddhist and tantric teachings um, shivaic teachings from india the the natural uh, religions like shamanism that were not about control were here before the hijack can give you some great healing and medicine that helps you to connect with the oneness and the spiritual equanimity of humanity to heal. Um, so um, I really believe I'm, I'm afraid that what Howdy Mikowski and others and the Gnostics say is, is accurate that uh, after, after you die, these beings are going to try to coerce you back into the, the moon matrix death trap into a slave family, and um, you have to reject coercion even then, reject it now, reject it then, always reject coercion and understand the real creator gave you free will, and like I said, it's a small, still voice, if any, they're never going to force you or beg you, um, but for me, um, when you reclaim your connection to the source, your creative powers start coming back. Real spirituality uh, creation is exploring. Um, compare the censorship that this platform and all the others of the main that are really popular went um, with forth with in 2020 um, to Yahweh. Okay, now yeah, I'm not saying that, that Yahweh is all evil. I mean, they create they created structure, and again, as I've said in previous recent videos here, some of us would just lollygag around in heaven, and uh, well, as my friend Roberto would say, would flounder around and not learn our lessons in heaven. Uh, if someone, if some socialist um, commie with a big heart wants to, you know feed the homeless and give them money and give them everything and then they're hooked on bad drugs and they never heal their traumas and lay around and get drunk and stoned and do, do meth and heroin and lay around. Uh, I don't know. You know, again, this, this outsourcing, the surrogate is not the real form in my estimation of creation here. But when I've created songs... When I've created poems or music or paintings and shared my opinions that was exploratory, where does it lead? This, to me, is the real uh, religion. Actually, music has been some of my most religious experiences. Whereas to contrast, um, your real relationship to your creator is not based on um, your obedience to the narrative. Tell me what you think about this. Okay, this is a com comedian. I don't even think you can see it. Let me put this behind it. This is a comedian. Um, 
calls himself DNA. And uh, <laughs> he is truly funny, truly amazing um, levels of self-parody in this. Okay, so for his advertisement, for his comedy night, he, he's Jewish by blood, little skinny guy with a full head of um, long gray curls who was a grateful, went on Grateful Dead tour for years. And um, is this the most deepest, this is how... This is why I love even the Dark Lords um, Jewish people because they're so funny. It's, it's 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 incredible. Like, okay, the self parody is you know. So if he, saying that he got the um, the injection and he knows what it actually is, say for example, if that's the case, and he puts this, you got to have the proof of vaccination to go to his comedy event at this place called the Greater Purpose. Um, brewery which i think is on the the ocean but they were going to put it in what was the place where i was tuned into the gnostics first the logos bookstore a man when he was about 71 years old decided to set the guy he started that bookstore when he was 25 after he got out of college i guess he was from a wealthy family and i would buy awesome um scriptures and Gnostic and tantric text in there for like a dollar or two dollars used in the basement. Spend hours looking through their stuff. So they were going to turn it into a Christian church that was also a brewery in downtown Santa Cruz, this cursed, massively hexed, cursed town. It's also massively blessed, massively abundant, massively full of ganja. So these people were going to. Um, when this man um, closed the brilliant Logos bookstores, which, by the way, the word Logos it actually means the same thing as what Yahweh supposedly means um, to the the esoteric, to people like me who, who actually study the comparative esoteric ancient text in the, the all from different traditions. Uh, Logos is another word for the, the, the name, the name of God. So... Give me a comment what you think about this guy DNA. I mean, it's just, um, I just have to put um, that for a contrast. And also, um, once again, um, I'm looking at the words I wrote on the top of this. And again, my, you know, if I have to take it on the military level, I'm from a military family, but um, sternly deciding not to worry, you know, is, um, is one of the ways we fight it. One of the ways we fight it, if you don't have time to meditate, just be like, no, I'm not worrying about it. Remember this? I... So people forget, you know, that they need oxygen. They're so used to giving it up. So um, this predatorial consciousness that we have become accustomed to, that we think is is like polite because it demands... You know, this supposed uh, karmic justice of all that we've done, you know, what, which actually is, is like making you be at work on time to the minute and, and count, you know, making you have to have every penny, penny. There was this one guy in Kind People's and I had, I was one penny short and he wasn't going to sell it to me. So I took a penny out of his tip jar and then he put it back in his tip jar. Now, this is the kind of mentality that you get, you know, um. Unless you, if you believe the 3D reality is, is all there is. But, um, real creativity, as I say, is like ex exploration, exploring and harmlessly trying to make good things, healing and love. Um, Vivian Chavez, I was watching today on the Journey to Truth podcast, she said you are a part of a very vast community of light. In other words, um, the archangels are all around us, you know. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoy this. I'm going to talk a little more here.